Hello everyone, Freely Hero here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build for this week's content. I hope you all keep it safe out there in the field, as today we're going to be playing around with a PvP focused build. Although it can be used in PvE if you wish, but PvP this time as I've not done one for a good while. So today, let's talk about the Whispering Slab bow and its new perks that's been introduced to this season. This bow is really unique from its really huge and odd looking design, to its new but incredibly effective perks that have been introduced to the new line of weaponry to play with. Now the perks in question are Killing Wind and Unrelenting, which when comboed together can create a very unique setup that improves the player's experience and kill tally if you keep the momentum up, and that's going to be a common theme you hear from me and many other players when talking about the perks. So if we're playing around with it for a very good while, I've created a build around the two perks to make the loadout I have more viable and deadlier with each position shot I land. I've also decided it would be a wise idea to add in some charge by light mods and also use invisibility as my main subclass perk to its full potential, so I can land the first shots without being spotted. All in all, this is a very nasty build. So starting things off with the subclass, we will be going with Way of the Pathfinder to make use of the ability stacking buffs and invisibility. The idea here is to make use of Heart of the Pack buff for the initial buff in Weapon Haste, Mobility, Recovery and Resilience, while also combining it with my Invisibility so we can land the first shots and also get out of action very quickly when need be. This will allow us to play a pivotal role in being both aggressive and supportive with our plays, as we can be frontal with our attacks and always lead the charge with our bow hit, and then follow up with our secondary or we can play a more defensive route where we can focus on hit and run tactics and sticking with our teammates while buffing them through every stats. Adding Killing Wind and Heart of the Pack together will allow two things to also follow. Firstly, we will be able to use both our primary and secondary in a much more coordinated fashion with the Weapon Haze buff and range. Secondly, follow up shots between the two will become a staple of the build, where landing a simple headshot with your bow and then switching and quickly following up with our secondary will allow you to net more kills in theory and practice, and that's just with the two abilities being active. You also get invisibility which will help with aggressiveness and map control, and enhanced grenades can allow you to lock down areas for much longer with a damage buff, and then you can have the combat provision perk as well active which will provide you back melee energy and grenade energy if you make your allies invisible, so everything here is going to be working in your favour. The importance of the build is to make sure you land the first hit and be able to quickly follow up from there, while also giving you the chance to push up via being invisible, and also helping your teammates out as well. If everything goes as planned, then you'll always come out on top. For grenades, I've chosen the Vortex grenades for their radius, damage and simplicity, as I can be more accurate with landing them directly at a player and doing damage that I know will connect with. Void Wall is also usable depending on the tightness of the map I'm playing on, but I find that Top Tree with his smoke bombs is a much more better combo to pair that with. For the weaponry side of things, the Whispering Slab of course with our two new perks is what we will be maining for PvP, and then secondary wise I would advise you to either have a hand cannon of a 110, 150, 180, or even a sidearm with ideally a full auto and some range perks built into it. For heavy, I recommend you just pick whatever you think is best for PvP as you're not really going to be making full use of the heavy perk all the time. Ideally, something like a machine gun or a grenade launcher would do you fine. The primary now, in our case here, like I said, is the Whispering Slab Bow with the new perks Killing Wind and Unrelenting with a accuracy masterwork. Now this bow has a lot going for it that makes it feel good to use, and it's kind of hard for me to describe it fully by what I mean unless you go ahead and give it a try yourself. For me, it might be that his aim assist is sticky, but not too sticky at 75, making it so that our shots are more accurate when combined with our accuracy stats. Its draw time and handling is also great for taking shots one after another, and great for keeping a tempo up as well. There's a lot going for this weapon, and I believe its ease of use is what truly makes the weapon very different to other bows. The perks on the other hand make the weapon feel even more better to use, if you're more of a PvP aggressive type player. Killing Wind gives you an increased mobility, weapon range and handling, which for a bow is absolutely amazing with its accuracy, even though lightweight frames accuracy are a lot more worse compared to the precision frames. And then Unrelenting offers a health regen upon kills, which for a bow that only needs to land 2 precision shots, is great for peeking. It's very achievable for the average to top tier players to go ahead and use this type of weapon and perks with pure ease. Just the two perks alone and the weapon's greatest stats is all that you really need for both PvE and PvP, which should indicate to you how well rounded it is. 
although there are some other perks I would recommend you go ahead and ideally use to such opening shots. For a secondary, I've gone with the curated trust hand cannon from Gambit with drop mag, EP rounds and triple tap. Still a very useful weapon of choice to pick for a hand cannon meta with good range and aim assist. Still a very useful weapon of choice to pick for hand cannon meta with good range and aim assist. Now as it's a 180 frame, shots will be more accurate on my end which pairs well with a bow for switching in between each shots made, so land a headshot with my bow and then follow up with a body shot or a headshot with my hand cannon. Now with EP rounds from my trust, it can knock a player's accuracy off from landing onto me and making sure that I do win the engagement which 99% of the time is what will happen. Now as a backup, I do also run with the curated Durang for the close quarter maps and against aggressive players alike when my trust just can't follow through at the time. And this may be something that you'll probably opt into using more, you may opt into using sidearms more which are a little bit more better for close to mid range engagements as they can fire much more quicker plus they don't have explosive rounds built into them so shots are going to be a lot more tighter on your end and you're not losing damage as well. And for a heavy, we will be using the Colony Grenade Launcher for a more simpler take on knitting kills with heavy, as we simply won't be relying on it all the time. But what we do is great. For stats, I want to focus around the main core stats such as resilience and recovery into the 50 and 60 ranges, where both stats will be at their best level for PvP and nothing more. Grenades being at 53 stat will push my cooldown to around a 59 second rate, which is generally fine as with the lockdown perk and combat provision perk, we can regen grenade energy very easily via going invisible. Now the main stat I heavily focused in is the strength stat at 78 for a 45 second cooldown, so we can make full use of our smoke grenades and invisibility, which will correspond with our exotic, the Graviton Forfeit helmet. As I mentioned before, we want to utilize the heart of the pack buff for increased stats gain, so the best way forward for this is to go invisible ourselves and to also make our teammates invisible in the process. This will improve our personal well-being by a mile and can also allow us to get the first drop in the players to which we can then follow up however we like. If we add in lockdown and combat provision perks as well, then we can combo our movesets accordingly and always have one or the other abilities always available. For armor pieces, which will need to be this season or last season armor, one arc affinity armor will be needed for the radiant light mod for an increasement in strength but only if you need it. We then need one Void Affinity piece for the Charge Harvester mod, and the rest can be whatever affinity you like for the rest of the two mods. Our exotic, the Graviton Forfeit will be our exotic of choice to increase our visibility duration and the secondary effect of recharging your midi faster while invisible. So with all that covered, for mod style that will aid the build further into PvP, I do have the following, which can be of course changed to however you like. Head, Recovery and Bow Targeting mod. Arm, Strength and Charge Harvester mod Chest, Recovery and High NG Fire mod Leg, Strength, Enhanced Bow Dexterity and Radiant Light mod Cloak, Concussive Damna, Distribution, Outreach and Taking Charge mod This is the ideal setup I run for PvP and it's been doing me fairly well with engagements and winning 1v1 fights from both close and medium ranges. The simple flick of my bow to land a headshot is all that I need to win most fights as I can follow up with another shot easily with the bow, or I can use my secondary to finish, and depending on the type of engagement you're in, you're going to be relying on this simple switch up in style a lot. Now thanks to my invisibility and the heart of the pack buff, I can always land my first shot without a hitch and by the time a player realises what happens, it will be too late for them to act, which makes this quick and agile build a perfect setup for those who are used to high accuracy shots. Now for an explanation of the mods I'm using, the Charge Harvester mod, Charge by Light mod and High NG Fire mods are there to allow me to become Charge by Light so I can then trigger my High NG Fire mod for a 20% damage increasement for all my weapons. This is primarily going to help me with my bow and secondary as a 20% buff is enough for me to quickly two shot body and then switch my secondary to finish. This basically allows me to not worry about needing to always land a crit to finish a fight, as I can easily switch between weapons in use, and as the bow is a lightweight frame with the add bonus of quick draw times and faster movement, we can pace our shots between multiple players with ease thanks to the buff going. The Charge Harvester mod is a new mod from this season that I want to test out for the build, and is a mod that has a very low chance to activate and allows it to become charged by light. Now when it works, it works and is really great, 
and the extra boost in damage is great for me to quickly follow up shots against more players, but it's a low chance to proc and it's quite an issue and you won't always get the chance to use it, which is why I'm rocking the Charge by Light mod as a backup just in case. Now while we're going invisible, I've added on the Radiant Light mod for a plus 20 in strength, which overall affects my smoke grenades, and when combined further with the Curved on Forfeit, it means longer usage of staying off the minimap, and if we hip fire with our bow only while invisible, we can get even more coverage. This like I said is important as it allows us to get the first drop on the players without them expecting it. The mod also has a secondary effect of also allowing our teammates to become charged by light via our super, which can be very beneficial for support focused builds in the future. And the rest of the mods left over there are to further provide more buffs when we use our abilities in general. All of this now is great in action and you will see a lot of results with it, and of course you can switch this up where you don't have to use this bow, you can use other bows as well, it just works really well with this setup I have here entirely. But of course this won't always go as planned if you're not used to using bows, specifically the lightweight frames with their low accuracy stats. This is the only main grip to using these bows, as accuracy and aim assist hand in hand can make the simplest of bows the most deadliest. This also majorly affects the weapons in terms of how far out you can ADS and still land a headshot, and also hip fire with the bow, which is something you're going to be relying on a lot. Which is why if you don't have the perks that improve your weapon's accuracy and draw time on the get go, then the bow is pretty much useless sadly. Now luckily for me, I got lucky, I got an averagely good roll that allows me to get away with it and also fully utilise the bow to its full potential. But like I said, if you don't get those specific perks that you're looking for, then the weapon becomes a bit useless, and bows fall in a very odd place in PvP, where they're good, but they're not overly used by a lot of players. In conclusion, the new bow feels and plays really well, with the new added on perks that suit the weapon's playstyle fairly well, with landing quick shots and keeping an effective tempo on my end. Of course, there are better perks to use in general. But for what we have, and for what you get if you decide to get this specific role, we can utilise it really well within the build, and if you wanted to push it further then we could use Oath Keepers instead of Graviton. But anyways, this is a fairly simple PvP build to use to maximise your gains on the field, and I can happily say this is a job well done for its end results. So if you enjoyed the video, then by all means do please leave a like and a sub. And also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for all stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.